hell is real. Jesus spoke about hell to people because he loves people. And I have a few thoughts I want to share with you about hell. The, the first is this. Hell is forever. Some might want you to think that hell is just a temporary thing on earth when you're going through a bad time that, oh, this is hell. No, hell is real and, and hell is forever. The second thing I want you to understand is that hell, hell is, is a place of pure evil. Pure evil. Because hell was actually made by God for the devil and for his evil angels. And some would have you believe that hell is this, this demonic outpost, that that's where they do all their war gaming and, and they strategize and scheme the events that they want to cause on earth. And, and so they, they erupt from hell to take over earth. No, I assure you beyond any shadow of a doubt that the demons and the devil are petrified of hell. Because God made it for them because of their evil. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, listen to what this says. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. See, the devil knows that Jesus is the Savior. He's the Redeemer. And all of the fallen angels know that Jesus is the Savior. But see, they rebelled. They, they rejected God's Son. They rejected Jesus. And they worked against Jesus with every ounce of their strength, and they still do. They've resisted His salvation, thwarted it, and stopped it from reaching man. And hell then is prepared for them as an eternal home, except that hell will have no comforts of home. It's a place where pure evil will be paying the price for being evil forever. And in, in every case, it's any and all evil. Whether it's a small amount of evil, a white lie, or a large amount of evil, a murder, or a rape, or adultery, it doesn't matter the extent or the depth of evil. Anything that is evil, hell is prepared for it. There's, in eternity, there's only one place where hell, or one place that evil will be, and, and you know where that is, that's hell. Hell. And here's, here's the third thought I want you to contemplate just briefly, and that is no one wants to go to hell, right? No one wants to go to hell. When a person sees hell, they're going to be shocked and afraid. And, and really, what, what we see in movies and what we see on, on, on pictures and maybe what we read in books, we would think, okay, maybe I can tolerate that. Maybe, but let me tell you, all of the media that you could read or look at, is, it pales in comparison to the reality and the severity of hell. I believe that when a person stands at the gates of hell, they're, they're going to go, I didn't I, I wasn't, I, I, I don't understand. Why wasn't I warned? Why didn't somebody tell me that it was going to be this way? I want to go back. I want to do this again. Let me choose again. I'll, I'll make a better decision. I didn't know. It's not fair that I didn't know this while I was alive. But there will be no recourse and there will be no hope. There will be no redo. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Today's the day that we celebrate Jesus Christ because He saved us from hell. He saved us from that. He rescued us through his blood and through his broken body. He made a way for us. You know why? Evil has touched every one of us. Every one of us. He took your evil and he died on earth. He was murdered by the same people that he came to save. He went to hell for you. 
being the son of God. He beat up hell. He beat up the devil. He beat up death. He beats up demons all day long. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. And that's what we celebrate this day. It's about celebrating what Jesus has done for all mankind. And listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So maybe that leaves you with a question, and that is, why does the devil have to go to hell and we don't? Well, the answer really is simple. The devil rejects the gift that God gives. He rejects it. God gave us his son Jesus. His body was broken and his blood was shed. He covered all of our evil with his blood. He covers all of our evil with his broken body. He became the suitable sacrifice for all of us. See, the devil rejects that. He knows it's true, but he rejects it and fights against it. Can you believe that? Can you believe that truth? Well, maybe the better question is this. Will you believe that? That's the real question. Will you believe that? Let me pray for you. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? Father, we do see that there is evil in this world. And we do see that, that, Lord, we are evil. In our flesh, God, I freely confess that, that I have done evil and I have the propensity to do it again. I am a sinner. And therefore, Lord, one sin, having been touched by evil, I have no recourse. I have no way out. What is reserved for me is what you made for the devil and the demons. I enter into the same lot as they do. But God, if, if, if not for Jesus who went to the cross and died for my sin, Lord, that would be the place I would go. But we celebrate today the work of Jesus as he went to the cross. The perfect lamb died on that cross, was buried, and he rose again. And in that offers a way for anyone, anyone who would accept that free gift. So Lord, today we celebrate the mighty, awesome, powerful gift that you sent to the earth. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Amen. Hell is real. Therefore, you know where this is going. Heaven is real. And that's where we're going. If you're redeemed... If you're bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, then you're going to heaven. And what we celebrate today is what Jesus did. He came back to life. And in so doing, he, he enables us to escape hell through his love and through his grace. We escape hell and we have heaven for eternity. There's a, there's a passage in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And it tells, it tells this story. 
It tells this, this experience that we have in being redeemed in Jesus. And these two verses, each of the verses has two segments, two little parts to it. So there's four parts. I want to read to you these two verses, and then I want to stop at the last part and walk backwards with you because it explains it so well. Why we're here today and what we're celebrating, it just makes, it, it makes my heart so happy. I don't know if you're celebrating today what Jesus has done. But he's given you the opportunity to never see hell. To never know hell. But to know paradise forever with him. Listen to these verses. Paul's writing to the Roman Christians and he says this. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith... We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Say that with me. Undeserved privilege. Where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Wow. So let's start with that last phrase and briefly just walk backwards. Here's the second part of the second verse. It says, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Heaven is real. And because Jesus Christ rose from the grave, he took the sting out of death. He beat up the devil. He beat up sin. He beat up hell itself. That's why we can confidently and joyfully look forward to heaven because of what he did, not because of what you've done. It's because of what he's done. So I have a question for you, every single one of you this morning. Do you have confidence about being in heaven? I would tell you that most people are more confident about being in hell than they are heaven. And that's actually a good thing. Because it moves them to a place of decision. If you were to die today, well, not right now, because that would be very disruptive in the service. So please don't, <laughs> yeah, please don't do that right now. Maybe at home in your recliner after a beautiful Easter meal. Then, then you know, you let, let your thoughts go there, okay? But if you were to die today, are you confident that you would go to heaven? But yet that's what Paul talks about here. He said, we confidently and joyfully look forward. Those who believe in Jesus ought to have confidence and joy that that's coming. Do you have that? How do you know if you're going to heaven or hell? That's a very important question. Well, if we take a step back to the second verse, part A, it addresses that issue. And here's what it says. Paul said, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. How do I know that I'm going to heaven? The short, short answer is, it's grace. It's God's grace. It's this gift that he's given to us through Jesus. Grace. I have received an undeserved gift. As I said earlier, evil has touched every one of our lives. If, if you are the, like, awesome, perfect person on earth, but you ever sinned once, maybe you had a bad thought about one person, and that's the only sin you've ever committed, then my friend, evil has touched your life. You are either the one who conquers evil, or evil has conquered you. There's no way, there, there's no middle ground. So what that means is, there's only one person who's ever conquered evil. You've never conquered evil. The Lord's conquered evil, and he's given you the opportunity to conquer evil with him. But of yourself, you are tainted, you are stained, you are sinful, just like me. But what Jesus did 
is he made a way for all of our evil, whether large or small, to be washed away. That's called grace. It's grace. It's a gift given to us. It's a gift. Now, when you think about gift, uh, I, I kid you not, this morning I was looking at my emails and I received an email and the email said this, you are amongst millions. You are the one. You have won the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes. I kid you not. And the end of it said this, all you have to do is, and it didn't even get that far because I deleted it. Do you know, you know as well as I do what we're accustomed to when people say that I have a gift for you. What, what are we thinking? And the strings are? What's, what's the catch? What, what are the strings? Listen to me. The gift that God gives through Jesus has no strings attached. There are no strings. There's no dotted line that, that you sign. There's no, there, there's no behavior that you have to begin to have. It's a free gift given. And listen, a long time ago, I accepted the gift of salvation from God. It's, it's, it's his gift. I accepted it. I believed the giver, and I believed the gift. But the author here, Paul, he goes a little bit further than that, and he talks about it at the end of verse number one. So let's back up and look at that. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. See, Easter is celebrating what Jesus has done for us. God offers grace as a free gift. Without the grace of God, you go to hell and I go to hell. Without the grace of God, there is no hope for any person who's been touched by evil. And we've already come to the conclusion that all have been touched by evil because we've all sinned. Heaven and hell are both real. And it is one of those two places that you will go. One of those two places. But without Jesus making a way for you to go to heaven, all of us would go to hell because we deserve to. You might think of yourself as a wonderful, kind, loving, gentle person, but because of evil touching us, we cannot be in the presence of a holy, righteous, and just God forever. We can't. That's why God sent his son Jesus to wash away the evil that we are. And see, God the Father is good with that. You know why? There's no suitable sacrifice on earth. There was no one that could stand and say, I'm the perfect sacrifice. I'm going to give my life for all of the wrongdoings of everybody on earth. It wouldn't have been an acceptable sacrifice because evil had already touched all of us. There was nothing on earth. Everything on earth has been touched by evil except Jesus, God's son. He made the decision to come and he gave his life for all of us. How does this even work? How, how, do, how does this happen? Well, you have to go to the first part of the verse. Number one, here's what it says. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by, what's the word? Faith. See, faith is believing that what I'm telling you is true. I believe that I need God's grace because I'm a sinful person. So is there anybody in here, please don't raise your hand, is there anybody in here who would say, Pastor, I am sinless. I've made every right decision. Now everybody around me thinks they're wrong decisions, but I've made all right decisions my entire life. No, we all know better. We can all look at decisions that we've made in our lives where the end result was sorrow because it was sinful. And that right there alone denies us entrance into heaven. 
But thanks be to God who's given to us a redeemer and his name is Jesus. He's made a way for every single person who would simply receive the gift. That's the faith. That's the faith in the first part of verse number one. The faith to believe that the gift is true. If you can simply believe that Jesus died on the cross and that he died for your sin and he rose again beating up the devil, beating up all of his demons, he throttles them every day, he beat death at its own game, he turned death on itself. He killed death so that we could have eternal life. If you could but receive that gift today, it's for you. Okay, Pastor David, don't I have to become a better person to receive that gift? Receive the gift, and inside the grace of God, he will make you a better person. All right, all right, all right. There's still a string attached. Because if I accept that gift, I'm going to have to come to church every week, aren't I? <laughs> accept the gift. And inside the grace of God, he will start your heart longing to know more about his love. And you'll probably find yourself in church wanting to know more about his love. The gift is free. And all you have to do is receive it. It all depends on whether or not you're open to receive the free gift of God. That's why we're here on this Sunday to celebrate the free gift of God. Maybe no one has ever told you it's free. Make no mistake, it's free. There's nothing you can do to earn it. There's nothing you can do to make yourself worthy of it. There's nothing you can do to make it go away once you've received it. It's his. And he gives it to you. Do me a favor and just close your eyes for a second. Maybe you've never heard anyone put it simply this way. So maybe today this message of grace is catching you, capturing your heart and your mind. Maybe there's a part of you that's saying today, I need and want God's gift of grace in my life. My friend, if that's you, would you, would you throw your hand into the air? Just put it up and say, I want that free gift today. That's right. Just put your hand up. Show a little courage. Put that hand up. Just throw it up. Throw it up in the air. Young or old, just put it up. Wonderful. Do me a favor. Stick it up higher for your sake, not my sake. It's almost like you're reaching out to God right now and saying, God, I want that free gift. I want the grace that you're offering no strings attached. I want it today. Come on, there's a couple more of you who need to do this. You're right on, the earth, right on the edge. You're on the verge. Walk across that threshold today and just say, God, I need that free gift of grace. Otherwise, I'm going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I recognize the reality of hell now. I want to go to heaven. I don't have any other way. I'm not good enough to get in. I'm not good enough to buy my way in. I don't have what it takes. God, I'm calling upon you to put grace in my life. Is there no one else who would just lift up their hand? I know your arms are getting tired. Hang with me. One more person. Put up your hand this morning. Cross over that threshold. God bless you. I see it. I see it. Those with your hands up, keep them up. I want you to repeat this prayer in your heart. You can use your own words if you want to. God, I accept your gift of salvation today. I accept the death of Jesus as the sacrifice for my sin and my evil. And I repent of my evil. Forgive me for my sin. I believe the gift and the giver. Make me new. Make me new. 
I want everybody to look up at me. Congratulations. Those of you who lifted your hand today, and you can put your hands down if you want to, congratulations. You are a child of God, and that can never be taken away from you. You are why Jesus came to earth. You are. You're going to be with him forever. At the end of the service, for you, if you're interested, there's some boxes on the other side of the offering boxes up here. There's books inside. And the books are entitled, Ten Steps Toward Christ. And it's really helpful to, to have some guidelines on the, the first steps as a Christian, what that is and what that means and how am I, you know, what do I do? What am I supposed to think? And it's very, very helpful. But I will tell you this, that book is not enough. You need a community of people that have made that decision as well and are walking it out to the best of our ability. Because listen, I accepted Jesus a long time ago, but I still sin. See, that's the beauty of grace doesn't give me permission to run out and sin when I want to. I just know that as much as I try to not sin and to not be evil, the Lord covers me. He covers me with his blood and I'm, I'm free. I'm not bound any longer by the weight of my sin. And there are, there are 20 or so of you today who lifted your hand and say, I'm, I need that in my life. Praise God, it's yours. But that book's not enough. You need a community of people to help you. We'd love to be that community. That's up to you. But you'll find that we love well here. We do. We love well. And, and we love to encourage people on their journey. So we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to ask our prayer warriors to come up front here and stand. And I want the rest of us to stand up. We're going to sing a song on our way out just to remind us again of who made all of this possible. His name is Jesus. Amen?